Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Dust and Elysian Tale. In the previous video, we've explored more of the Blackmore Mountains and caught a few avalanches along the way. And now we can continue on with our journey and come up across some more avalanches. Ow! Yeah, this is what happens when I don't do a practice run. and I get totally caught off guard. But anyway, let's go ahead and continue on with the Blackmore Mountains and see if we can meet up with Ginger at the uh, at the end. And also, the map is a bit wonky again. Um, I do believe there is, yep, there is something up here for me to open up. A chest. And inside this chest, we have a blueprint for a pendant of the marsh, which I believe I already got. Yes, I do. And that's all there is here. Oh, hello, Sir Kush. How are ya? Whoop. Yeah, ah, fucker. You broke my chain. That's okay, at least I got some XP out of it. And the wind's starting to pick up again, and also the breakaway platform for a treasure key. So, what can I talk about while I'm making my way up to the top of the mountain? Well, um, whoop, don't even think about it. Ah! How did that wolf not get me? Anyway, a um, couple of things I'd like to announce, um, both of them being uh, related to Twitch. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, I got another teleport stone. That's nice. And a frozen blade blueprint. An icy sheen on your blade provides additional damage. And I don't have whatever that material is, so... I cannot craft it, unfortunately. Hmm. So anyway, um, first thing I want to announce, I am extremely close to becoming a Twitch affiliate. Yep, I recently hit 50 followers, and I've met three of the four requirements to becoming an affiliate. The one thing that needs to be uh, checkmarked is the average number of viewers that I need, and I just leveled up again. Very nice. Let's see. Uh, let's do max health. Why not? Yeah, right now I have an average of 2.8 viewers, and I need an overall average of 3 viewers for my stream, so... Yeah, this is a bad idea. Wow, how did I get away with not getting uh, set on fire? That's just... Lucky, lucky. Anyway. So yeah, hopefully in my next stream I'll uh, meet the requirement for average viewers. So that I'll become an affiliate. Which might happen, hopefully. Don't want to keep my hopes up too high. And drink myself. Alright. Ah, this part. This is the part with all of the uh, friggin' platform. Careful. Ah! <laughs> yeah, still gotta watch out for those icicles. Now, there are so many keys and chests to open up. So, I gotta keep an eye open for them. And try to remember where they're at, too. Yeah, don't dash downward, Dust. Don't wanna go right into the spikes. Uh, let's see. I believe the first place I need to check is... Over here. Oh, nope, there's a key right there. Yeah, you're probably going to see me fall into the spikes a lot and uh, fail miserably multiple times as I try to remember where I need to go. But yeah, there's a key right here, and I believe there is also a chest around here. Oh, that's probably the way back. So anyway, that's that. The other thing is, um, uh, QuakeCon is going to be happening next weekend, and it's going to be online because of the pandemic, of course. Warrior's Pendant, I believe. No, I don't have this one. Uh, this pendant carried great weight, as if it had been through many battles. Actually, don't I have a Warrior Pendant already? No, I don't. 
Uh, doesn't provide any regeneration for health, though, so I'll pass on that. So yeah, um, there's going to be a lot of things happening at uh, QuakeCon next weekend. Um, with things relating to Doom Eternal, Elder Scrolls, and Quake, of course. Um, as a matter of fact, um, according to Bethesda, we can actually buy the original Quake off of the Bethesda website for free. I think that's what they said. And um, Quake 2 will also be a bit available for purchase if they reach a certain donation goal, if I recall correctly. But I already got both of those games, so uh, no out, no need to uh, no need to buy them off Bethesda. And let's not forget this key right there, and there we go. That's everything over here in this portion of the map. So yeah, um, I can't wait to uh, check out QuakeCon. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of fun things happening. Um, one of which is something that's going to involve someone I've been watching on YouTube that goes by the name of uh, Drakhu, I think is how you pronounce it, his name. Yeah, he's a guy I've been watching on YouTube recently, and uh, he's someone that's done, like, multiple playthroughs of Doom Eternal on Ultra Nightmare difficulty. In fact, he actually did a couple of speedruns of uh, Doom Eternal on Ultra Nightmare. And, um, ah, I need an explosive fruit. And, yeah, I've been checking out his uh, Ultra Nightmare videos, and I've been learning quite a lot from his uh, playthroughs about what to do when you're uh, doing things like encountering a Marauder or a Doom Hunter and uh, yeah, never knew about uh, the trick with taking out the Marauder very quickly by using the uh, the Ballista and the uh, Super Shotgun, switching back and forth very rapidly and um, yeah, I learned that from watching his um, Ultra Nightmare playthroughs. And what do we have in here? We got birthday cakes. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, my birthday's in March. <laughs> it's the last day of July right now. And I'm gonna die. I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. Yeah, this is what happens when I try to speedrun through this area. And also, I do believe there is another... Nope. Gotta grab this uh, explosive fruit right here, which hopefully won't go off if I mess around with it too long. So yeah, I uh, might have brought this up before, but I did attempt an Ultra Nightmare run in Doom Eternal, and I only made it to the uh, second level of the game. Yeah, I was busy fighting off an Arachnatron, and then another Arachnatron snuck up behind me and bitch slap me to death. So yeah, hopefully my uh, next attempt will go a little better. Because I've been taking some uh, tip. No, no, no! Don't go towards them! Damn it! I did not want the explosive fruit to come here. Because I need the explosive fruit to unlock a couple of secrets. Eh, uh, oh well. We're gonna have to go down and get the explosive fruit again. I don't believe the explosive fruit is required for forward progress. It's required to uh, open up a couple of secrets. Uh, hold on a second, I don't want to take the platform. There we go. So yeah, Dracu is going to be uh, attempting another Ultra Nightmare playthrough in Doom Eternal during QuakeCon, and uh, that's going to be fun to watch, I, I suppose. I can learn more about uh, how to beat the game on Ultra Nightmare. As a matter of fact, I am... Uh, I did do a playthrough of Doom Eternal on uh, regular Nightmare mode. Oh god, no, 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 don't go toward the spikes! Don't go toward the spikes! Okay. So yeah, I did 
I did go through the game on Nightmare difficulty, and uh, I did die a few times. And of course, I had extra life mode enabled. So yeah, beating the game on uh, Ultra Nightmare is gonna be one hell of a trip, one hell of a walk through the park or something. I don't know. Ah, got a ring here. Master Ring of Focus. Plus 10 regen. Holy crap. A rare gift given to those who show promise in overcoming life's obstacles. Yes, please. I'll take that and then equip the Ring of Study on my other finger. And I'll, that's all the items we have to find here. And the music just stopped. Well, that means we are getting very close toward the end of the Blackmore Mountains here. And, um... Remember how I said at the start of this chapter that things are going to get serious? Well, I don't really mean that in terms of, like, difficulty. Like, the monsters here aren't really all that difficult, per se. I mean, they are tougher than the, uh, the enemies that we've dealt with at, like, the Saruman Caverns and the Sorrowing Meadow. But, um, I mean, serious as in, in terms of, uh, uh, story. You'll see what I mean once we get to where that flag is located on the map. And the wind is really pushing me back. Yeah, I'm, like, constantly pushing back against the wind to go forward. Watch out for the icicles, damn it. Oh, I quit. Whoop. Oh, it took him out rather easily. Oh, did I get that new material? I did. Tough metal. Well, I guess that means I can now craft this, yeah. The frozen blade. There we go. Of course, that's the only tough metal that I got, and that means I won't be able to catalog it upon going back to the shop. But at least I'm able to, I'm able to craft that uh, that new augment that I got. And besides, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pick up a, an even better augment when I start up the final chapter of this game. Alright, now let's drop on down here, because I do believe there is a chest over here at the end of this road, and there is. And, damn it, what do we have inside this chest? We got a blueprint for Mountain Gear, a sturdy outfit designed to aid its wearer in climbing Falana's highest peaks. And... I might have enough materials to craft it. Let's see, I need six wolf pelts, two kush pelts, and two hollow shards? I think? Is that right? Yep! There we go, more defense and more regen than the special vest. And more luck as well. Oh cool, how much health do I regenerate now? 26! Nice! Alright. Oh god, am I gonna make this jump? Ooh, just barely. <gasps> Ooh, okay, that was a risky leap right there. Especially with the wind constantly pushing me back. Alright, there we go. And there's the shop right there. I don't think I can... Yeah, I can't craft the... Or catalog the tough metal, so... We're just gonna have to move on. Oh, hey, we got this, uh, music again that we heard at the very beginning of the game. And what do we have over here? There... there was a road here. I remember it. Before that day. Ah, it looked like Dust is finally able to jog his memory. And also, is this the road that Augustine was referring to? Because... Right before we left the Sorrowing Meadow and made our way up the Blackmore Mountains, he said something about the main road being closed off ages ago. I wonder if this is the road that he was referring to. So, 
So yeah, I will admit. Uh, Look up ahead, a village. All the way up here? Do you think it's that moonblood camp Kane was talking about? No, it's something else. It's en enough talking. Let's get up there. Yeah, don't want to talk over the cutscenes, but I was gonna say this is actually my favorite part of the entire game because, um, yeah, I said that things were gonna get serious in terms of story, and uh, yeah, this part of the game right here actually throws you in for quite a few loops, and it's some really deep, heavy stuff. Not gonna lie. And um, also, the track that's playing here, the same track that we heard back at the very beginning of the game in the Glade when Dust awoke and first met Fidget and Ara, this track is called Twin Souls. And again, that uh, relates to the fact that Master Kane said that Dust had Twin Souls. Well, we're about to find out what Twin Souls means. Halt! What? No. Impossible! Cassius! What did you call me? Who are you? What are you doing in this place? You... You were dead! No. No, this is not possible. I don't know what demon you are, but you will not step any closer! Kill this... thing! And this is our boss battle of this chapter. Fighting a couple of General Gaius' soldiers. And they can parry me as well as uh, Death can parry enemies. Oh, whoops. I did not mean to open that up. I was trying to use the dash key. Anyway, that's two down, one more to go. And this guy is just constantly parrying me. Uh, sweep him off his feet. Oh, <laughs> I just knocked him backwards with the leg sweep. Ow! And down he goes. Why? Why destroy such a peaceful place? We didn't want any of this. Gus, what are you talking about? And who is Cassius? That's not... It's not my name. I remember it. I know it when I heard it. So yeah, that's weird. General Gaius' soldier mistook Dust for Cassius. Could it be that they both look alike and, you know, the soldier were mistaken? Or could it be something else? Well, let's carry on forward and find out as we approach Zeppelin Village. And it looks like the whole village has been destroyed by the looks of things. Looks like this place has been destroyed for quite some time. A year, actually. Huh? How do you know that? This was Ginger's village. I was here one year ago. According to Fuse, according to Ginger, I helped murder everyone in this village. Oh, dust. But I don't remember any of it. I remember this place, but it feels like it's been more than a year. Ara, what does it mean? It only means that things are not as they seem. Explore the village further, Dust. Let us see what secrets it hides. Alright. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, I was wiping some sweat off my forehead. <laughs> anyway, what can we find here in this village? And where's Ginger? This house. Do you remember something, Dust? This is impossible. Yeah, there's a house here that's in... that's still in good condition. And by the way, just like before with uh, Ginger and Aurora, the game is basically preventing us from leaving this area so that we can further continue the story. So let's go into this house and see what we can find. Dust? How? Do you see now? But how, Ara? I don't understand. The answers lie above, Dust. Yep. The answers lie above. 
in this very room. So, brace yourself, guys, because once I take another step forward over by the bed to the left, all will finally be revealed. Ginger, she was sleeping right here. All the night I came to say goodbye, but I hesitated. I didn't want to wake her, didn't want her to worry about me. She couldn't know what I was about to do. Dust, what are you saying? She couldn't know that I was about to go avenge our parents. You mean, you're... But how? What's going on here? I... I remember now, but how? How can I have helped destroy this village, but be a victim of that same act? That's impossible. Only impossible for a creature with a single soul. Ginger. Those eyes. I know those eyes. So, Mithrarin, you finally see the truth. Who are you? I am Elder Grey Eyes, leader of the Moonblood people. Well, what's left of them, that is. What did you mean just then, that I can finally see the truth? What do you know about me? His eyes, Elder. They're Jin's eyes. They do look remarkably similar to your brother's, yes. That is because his soul lives on within dust. What? However, to suit our needs, we required two souls. The soul of innocence is a noble thing, but without skill, without power, dust would have been struck down just as easily as your brother was on that faded day. No. So we combined your brother's soul with that of his murderer, the royal assassin known as Cassius. They perished at the same time, forever entwined. Never before had I heard of such an event. Nothing wrong! You have been deceived, little one. Your parents turned against their king, an act of pure treason. What resistance there was, was led by your family alone. You destroyed my village, murdered my friends and family! You will not survive this day! I take no joy in slaughtering one as young as you, child. But you have forced my hand. A grave injustice was done that day. Cassius murdered a defenseless djinn, but his pride and arrogance proved to be his undoing. But how? How can this... this thing be my brother? It's not possible. I couldn't even remember you when we met. You are Jin, yes. But you are also Cassius. Two souls, forever at odds. One of innocence, one of power. Together you form the one we call Mithrarin. He who is born of the dust. I never knew what happened. Jin just disappeared one night. I had always hoped he would turn up alive someday. That he would come back. But... Could you really be him? Ginger... I don't know... I... I don't know... Now, Dust, I imagine you have many questions. Please, do not hesitate to ask them. Who... or... I guess... what am I? You are what my people call Sen Mithrarin. He who is born of the dust, created from the essence of the life thread itself. You see, my people have been on the verge of extinction for a great many years. General Gaius planned to eradicate us once and for all. And while our warriors are proud and strong, what chance would we have against such a powerful foe? To defeat General Gaius and save our people, we would need a warrior capable of standing against an entire army. This warrior would also need to be pure of heart, incorruptible. 
So that's why you picked Cassius and Jin. Just like you said, opposites. Exactly. Cassius was one of the greatest warriors this world has ever seen. And Jin's purity of heart would help guide our warrior to save our kind. From their fallen souls, you were born. Born to save us. To save this world. Why did I only remember now? I didn't even recognize Ginger when I met her. You may possess the souls of two separate beings, but your body and mind are your own. You were created to save this world, so we felt giving you memories of either soul would simply distract you from the task at hand. I had no idea who I was, what my purpose was. You say that, but in all cases you did exactly what we intended you to do. You saved complete strangers outside of Aurora Village. You stopped our wayward brother Fuse from destroying all that we sought to save. You saved Mudpot and brought the waters of life back into this land. You purged a demonic rage from this land and even helped two old souls find peace once more. You may not have known your purpose, but that did not stop you from fulfilling it. And now I'm here. Yes, now you are here. And we can finish this fight once and for all. Who was Fuse? He said he was a Moonblood, but he looks nothing like you. Fuse. He was once a fine warrior, and a close friend of Ginger's family. He would help transport goods between this village and our camp. After the village was destroyed, I guess he lost his mind. He was horribly disfigured after the attack. The only way he could survive was in a special suit of magical armor that I helped to construct. He demanded we attack General Gaius right away, but I would not hear any of it. He would have killed us all in the name of vengeance. We would not have stood a chance. When I refused to send our warriors into battle, he called me a coward and vowed that he would destroy Gaius with or without my help. I fear the very armor we made to save his life had corrupted his mind and body beyond repair. Poor guy. If only we could have gone through to him somehow. No, you're right to kill him. If he had remained alive, there's no telling what damage he could have done. Ginger is right. Fuse was beyond saving. For all our sakes, I hope the same is not true of the world he sought to protect. How does the Blade of Ara fit into all this? What is it, exactly? It is one of the five blades of Elysium, ancient weapons forged when our kind were many, and the way of the flameless light was commonplace. Wait, wait, wait. What the heck is the way of the flameless light? A path we Moonbloods continue to follow. It is a way of living, a way of thought, that allows us to make use of a power both old and great. Magic without magic. I am so confused. Surely, as Nimbat Sword Guardian, you've studied the ancient doctrines. You must know, in the event that the sword is summoned by its rightful owner, you are obligated to follow. I may have skipped over that chapter? You haven't answered my question. The Blades of Elysium were created to guide their sword bearer's dust. I was summoned to your side to ensure a balance was maintained between the souls within you. Ah, my old friend. It is good to hear your voice once more. It has been a long time, Master. Wait just a second. How can you possibly know each other? My clan's been keeping the sword hidden for over 200 years. Master Grey Eyes has lived for a very long time, Fidget. Longer than any of you. So you were sent to keep an eye on me? To help you reach your true potential. Nothing more. I have no more questions. What now? You must join us in the Moonblood Camp to the north, in the Everdawn Basin. That isn't anywhere near the Everdawn Volcanoes, is it? They are one and the same, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Volcanoes? Indeed. What a better place to hide than in the most volatile land in all the kingdom. Oh, I know! 
how about a peaceful meadow? Or a quiet forest? Or some place that doesn't explode every ten minutes? Dust, your friend seems awfully tense. No, I'm fine. Come on, let's go to the Blowy Up Mountains. Really, I'm serious. Fidget, you need to have more faith in me. I'll have faith in you when you have faith in yourself. How about it, huh? Who are you? Really? I am... I... Uh... You see? You still haven't figured it out yet! Lizard guy tells you right to your face, and you still don't know! Fidget, please calm down. You mustn't test your friend like this. I just... <sighs> if I'm gonna follow you to the literal end of this world, I need to know who I'm following. And why. I understand, Fidget. You're right. I can't ask you to follow me. But I can. Fidget, you have stood by Dust's side for this entire journey. You have watched him save this world. How can you continue to doubt? I just don't get it. It doesn't matter who he thinks he is. He's Dust. That's who he is. That's who I know. Fidget, please. I can't do this without you. Can you, uh... Can you repeat that? I said I can't do this without you. I'm sorry, I just... Nobody's ever said that to me before. And it won't be the last time, I assure you. Are you ready, Mithrarin? I am. Then we will meet you in the Everdawn Basin. Goodbye, Dust. We'll see you there. So, yeah. That's some pretty heavy stuff, isn't it? And with that, we have updated our main quest once more. You've discovered the truth about yourself. Meet up with Ginger and the Elder in the hidden camp at the foot of the Everdawn Basin. So, just like that. We have all the answers to all the questions. We now know who Duff did, we now know his true purpose, and we now know what we must do to basically finish up this game. Now we can head on over this way to this save point, and we can finally leave the village. General Gaius? What news, Commander? I did not want to believe it, but Cassius is working with the Moonbloods. He has turned against us. That will be for me to decide. Our paths will cross at the Moonblood camp. Of that I am certain. I will speak with him personally. Is that... wise? Our victory is all but assured, Commander. We outnumber them ten to one. We possess superior technology. And we have the element of surprise. But why welcome this rogue element? He has already slain your own soldiers. What more proof do you need that he is a traitor to our cause? Cassius is hardly a rogue element, Commander. The Moonbloods have corrupted his mind, forced him to commit these acts against us. Once I can speak with him, once he remembers who he really is, I'm certain he will return to us. But... <clears throat> yes, sir. As you wish. Cassius, my old friend, so long as you draw breath, I will do what I can to save your broken mind. I promise. You know, this never crossed my mind, but how is it that General Gaius, who's all covered in fur, have a beard and long hair and thick eyebrows? I don't get that. Characters who have both fur and hair. Same thing with Asgore and Undertale. But anyway, we're all done with the Blackmore Mountains for now, and I will see you guys next time as we go to pretty much our final destination of the game and start up the final chapter at the Everdawn Basin. So, take care everybody, I'll see you guys next time. Sleep tight, Fidget. Don't let the bed bugs bite.
Anyway, goodbye everybody.